I fully understand that it's late May, so taking a stab at 2021 NFL awards for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, it's a little bit out there, but don't care. Like, this is how much I care right there so we're going to take a stab at some of these categories and awards and we'll go through we got an offense and a defense and Kelamon, if he wins a couple defensive awards respect respect that man so clear the decks let's go first up most improved i can feel it man ezra cleveland and dj Wanham. two selections from the 2020 class i think ezra will thrive in his new role at guard i think that he will become one of the best nastiest mobile agile hostile left guards in the national football league i think his anchor will get better i think he's motivated i think he's fully capable of becoming a great guard and i know that hey maybe there were some promises made but you're not going to pass up on Darisaw, especially when you get him at 23 after your trade down. And then DJ Friggin Wanham. I know all the hype is around Patrick Jones and Janaris Robinson and Weatherly is back. But DJ Wanham is the second best edge rusher uh, for the rookie class in 2020. I think that he will firmly establish himself this year. I think he'll get after it. I think he'll rack up and stack up, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine sacks. There is a little bit of puck luck with sacks, but I think he'll get after it opposite of Daniel Hunter, where last year, with Afadi and, and company, I mean, DJ Wanham was getting a lot of attention, but with Daniil back, him taking up two, sometimes three blockers, and DJ getting some one-on-one -on -one spots, I think he'll go boom. I think he'll go boom, boom, boom in 2021. Next up, most underrated player, offense and defense. Ooh, Adam Thielen and Cameron Dancer, where it's weird to say Adam Thielen is underrated, but I think that he really is. When you talk about the offense, you always talk about the O-line. You always talk about Kirk. Is he worth the money? Is he not? You always talk about Justin friggin' Jefferson. You always talk about Dalvin. Like, Adam Thielen is like six string when it comes to talking about uh, of the offense. But 14 touchdowns last year, career high. I think that he will have a lot of opportunity as he edges into the golden years of his career. Plus, with Kyle Rudolph out of the mix, I think there's going to be a lot of red zone opportunity. Thielen really established himself as one of the best red zone receivers in the league last year. So, I think good times are here to stay. Plus, with Justin Friggin' Jefferson taking up wide receiver one attention, Adam Thielen is going to operate, man. Absolutely. Plus, if ISM gets going as the third wide receiver vertical threat, Thielen's going to eat. The pride of Mankato State University Community College. And also, on defense, Cameron Tyler Dantzler. I don't know what it is where this defense, it's completely rebuilt and re revamped and ready to go from 2020. But Dantzler quietly had one of the best rookie cornerback seasons last season, last year, if not the best. And I think that he, if he can stay healthy, add some good weight, can become that cornerback one for the Vikings. I think he could learn a lot from Patrick Peterson, who comes in as a free agent. Also, Matt Alexander coming back in uh, as a free agent. So I think Dantzler is set up. Year two can be very, very special for the needle. But hopefully... I don't know. Hopefully he adds 15 pounds and then the needle just sort of is retired as a nickname. Ah. Next up, comeback player of the year, offense and defense. Garrett Bradbury and Daniil Hunter. Now, Daniil, pretty obvious. Coming back for a herniated disc in his neck. Youngest to 50 sacks. He resumes his pursuit of Bruce Smith. 200 sacks. He's going to get there. First Bell Hall of Famer eventually in my mind. Hashtag pay Daniil. Bradbury, so comeback player of the year where usually you're coming back from injury, but Bradbury was just bad last year. That, that's always funny to me. But uh, I think that he gets the stuff together. I think having competent guard play next to him really helps. And I think Bradbury will ascend and become that man in the middle, become the pivot man for the Vikings uh, for the near future. Next up, best new newcomer. I don't know how to phrase that. Best newcomer, Christian Frigandarasa at left tackle. Vikings get some stability out there on the blind side. And then Dalvin Tomlinson. Diesel Dalvin coming in. Or I know, you're paying 11 million bucks for a nose tackle, but he's going to play three tack. He's going to play passing down nose, and he's just going to get after it. He's a great leader on the inside. He was a captain with the Giants. It wouldn't shock me if he's a captain here with the Vikings. I, I think he's a true leader of men. He's smart. He's humble. And he's just going to lead this Vikings defense from the inside out. So I'm really bullish on what Dalvin Thompson is going to bring. And with Derisaw, I mean, the athleticness is uh, the athletic uh, athleticism nailed it is there. He's got size. He's got speed. He's got quickness. He can run block with the best of them. He's a great pass protector as well. So I'm, I'm fired up about both these guys, man. Next up rookie of the year. So it's like the weird thing where you have MVP and offensive rookie of the year and our offensive player of the year. And they're two different people. So we're splitting up newcomer and rookie of the year just because we can. If you don't like it, start your own award show. But rookie of the year, Wyatt Davis, no matter what, I think he'll secure the right guard spot and just bring more stability to that offensive line where 
And Darisaw and Wyatt Davis and Ezra transitioning to guard. Bradbury getting stuff together. Brian O'Neill continue to be one of the best young right tackles in the game. Just getting in. Just getting up front. Also, Chaz Surratt on defense. Where, I mean, people forget about Chaz Surratt. I mean, Chaz is a, a damn good player, and I think that he will make an impact on this team, especially special teams, where you know, your, your top two linebackers are going to be Barr and Kendricks, right? And it's a sub-package league. Nickel is a new base defense, so the third linebacker isn't really that important. But I think Chaz Surratt will get in some work on special teams and eventually could work his way into the mix. Could he eventually replace Anthony Barr next year uh, since Barr redid his contract and is now on a one-year deal? Possible. Uh, next up, first coach fired. Where, I don't know, if, if you have success, you're not going to fire a coach, but... You know, first coach fired, obviously Rick Dennison, and a little bit of a shocker, defensive coordinator Zimmer, where I feel like Mike Zimmer might finally be at the point where he's okay giving a play calling, and probably to Andre Patterson, probably not to Little Zim, but also I don't think that they're going to fire anyone on that defensive staff uh, because he just got here, Scott just got here, uh, he's not going to fire his kid, he's obviously not going to fire Andre Patterson, so I don't know, who you going to fire? No one. But maybe Zimmer will demote himself from play caller. Maybe he'll finally give that up and become the head coach of the entire team as opposed to just the defense coordinator with the challenge flag. I don't know. I don't know. And Dennison, yeah, that one's pretty obvious. Where you have all this talent up front, and if you get similar results, it's not the players. It's not the talent. It's the leadership. It, it is the coaching. X Factor, offense and defense. Garrett Bradbury. As he goes, so goes the Vikings offense. Because as the offensive line goes, as goes the running game, as goes the passing game, protecting Kirk Cousins, and as goes the offensive line, so does Garrett Bradbury. Where if he can solidify himself in the middle, if he can be that true blue leader of men up front, I think that this offensive line has a chance to become very special. Uh, they're all young. They're ready to go. They're all scheme fit. And if they can just develop some chemistry and Bradbury, he, he's great uh, calling out protections. He's got to be that leader up front. He's got to take care of his own business too. If he can do that, I think this offense could be elite. Uh, Michael Pierce, man. Michael Pierce is awesome. Where you go back and watch 2019 Ravens tape, just Michael Pierce absorbing bodies, just jacking fools. You can't run on him. He's an underrated pass rusher as well. And you look at Dalvin Thompson, newcomer, Michael Pierce, X Factor. I think that this defense is going to be rebuilt from the inside out. Where this defensive line, this defensive interior last year was not good. It was not good. And now we have the revenge of the fallen, just absolutely getting back after it. So I think Pierce and Bradbury, both inside, both are going to be those X factors on the respective sides of the ball. Next up, surprise, offense and defense. Tyler Gronklin and Harrison Hand. So Gronklin, tight end two coming in. All, all the hype is about Irv Smith. I'm super bullish on him as well. But the Vikings last year led the league in running two tight end sets. I don't know if junior Clint Kubiak will carry that on, that on from his dad, uh, Gary Kubiak. But, I mean, Tyler Gronklin in a contract year, former six-round pick out of Central Michigan, he's ready to go. Uh, I think he's uh, underrated as an athlete. He's underrated as a receiver. I think that he deserves a lot more work. They like him a lot in two-minute drill. So, I think that he will get a surprising amount of work, and I think he'll show up and show out. I think he'll do really good this season. Also, Harrison Hand, 38 special, one, the fifth-round pick out of Temple by way of Waco last year, where I really liked him uh, in the draft process, and I, I just feel like he never got the time of day last year where rookies were naturally going to be at a disadvantage unless you're a first- or, or third-round pick like Gladney and Dancer, respectively. So Hand, when he got on the field, he was good. Now, with a full rookie camp, full offseason, full training camp and preseason, I think that he will get more and more opportunities. So even though I know that we're talking about uh, Bashad Breeland coming on in or we're, we're talking about Patrick Peterson and Mac Alexander, but I, I just have this sneaky suspicion that Harrison Hand is going to do some work this year. I, I'm really fired up about it. Last two categories. So got to have it. Where if this team is going to go anywhere in 2021, got to have great performances from these jabronis. Next, uh, Kirk Cousins and Anthony Barr. Where Kirk Cousins, it's obvious. Like quarterback is the most important position in all team sports unless we're talking about the 2020 Offensive Rookie of the Year. So Kirk Cousins, as he goes, so does this team. If he can be protected, Dalvin's going to have a, a great time running behind this revamped offensive line. So if Kirk can't get it done, that's on him. That's on no one else. Everything is set up perfectly for him to succeed. You got protection. You have weapons. You have a great play caller who knows you. And you have a running game. And you're going to have a good defense across from you. So 
this is it. Like there are no more excuses for Kirk Cousins. He's got to get it done in 2021. And Anthony DeBar, I mean, obviously the defense missed Anthony DeBar last year, leadership as well as his play on the field. And Barr, he's sort of polarized. Well, actually, Barr and Cousins are probably the two most polarizing players on the team. Where a lot of people still trash on Anthony Barr because Zimmer said that offhand comment from 2016. Oh, he was coasting. I was just coasting. No, but Anthony Barr is solid. He's good in coverage. He's good against the run. Uh, I think that he's exactly the type of Sam linebacker that Zimmer envisioned when he transitioned him from an edge rusher to a linebacker in 2014 as a number nine overall pick coming in. But he redid his deal. He wants to stay here. He's probably going to get cut anyway if he didn't. But he has to lead. Him and Kendricks have to be those dudes that take this defense back to where it once belonged. And I think you'll get a career season at Anthony DeBar. He's got he's in a contract year, so he wants to get paid either here or somewhere else. So double nickels is going to bring it on defense. Lastly, MVP. MVP. We'll do it one at a time. Actually, no. Screw that. So Dalvin Cook and Eric Kendricks. Where all this talk about the offensive line rebu- being rebuilt has been about Kirk Cousins. But Dalvin Cook... Um, he, he was second in the league last year in rushing, second in overall touchdowns, behind an offensive line that was okay. Okay, you had to go to Dojo starting, uh, starting all 16 games, but now you have this great scheme fit, phenomenal get after run blocking offensive line, and Dalvin is going to cook, man. Like, I understand and respect King Henry in Tennessee. I get it, especially since they don't have Corey Davis and Arthur Smith. Maybe they'll just run the ball 40 times a game, but. Dalvin Cook is going to lead the league in rushing. He's going to stay healthy for all 17 games, and he's going to break the single-season rushing record. Eric Dickerson, what up? I know that Eric Dickerson and his supporters will piss him on that Dalvin got 17 games to break his 16-game record, but no one complained when he had 16 games to break OJ's 14-game record, but whatever. But Dalvin is going to be a beast. He's motivated. He is fired up. He's going to play the season in, his honor, uh, in honor of his late father, so he is he's special. He's a very, very special player, and he's going to have the season. Not not a season. He's going to have the season, man. Defensively, Kendricks. Kendricks, I think, might be the most underrated defensive player in all of football. I, I really do believe so. He's just a heat-seeking missile in the run game. He's the best coverage line uh, inside linebacker uh, in the National Football League, and I think that the fact that he now has – 700 pounds of dude in front of him and Michael Pierce and Diesel Dalvin Tomlinson. He's going to be freed up to scrape, make calls, just make plays all over the place. And man, 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 first team all pro deserves it. And he's going to get it. So there you go. That's the first early stab at 2021 Vikings awards. What are your thoughts on our thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Post on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.